Now we're going to start talking about the product to sum formulas. So if we pull out our formula sheet here, um, product to sum formulas are the next set down here below the half angle formulas. Uh, if you want a copy of this to follow along with, uh, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can click that link, uh, open this up, print it out, and follow along if you'd like. So um, there's four of these product to sum formulas here, but actually the third and the fourth one, they're pretty much kind of the same thing. The fourth one's a little bit redundant, and we'll talk about why when we get there. But anyway, let's uh, we're going to establish these first two. Uh, using the sum and difference formulas for cosine, and then the second two we can get from the sum and difference formulas for sine. Okay, so uh, sum and difference formulas for cosine: cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, and then cosine alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So we're going to use those two uh, to get these first two product of sum formulas here. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down those sum and difference formulas first. So we'll do the cosine alpha minus beta on top. Cosine alpha minus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And then directly below that, we'll write cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. OK. Now what we're going to do is something that might seem a little weird, but you may remember doing stuff like this uh, in a pre-calculus or college algebra course um, when you did stuff with solving systems of equations. We're going to take these two equations and then add them together. And what does it mean to add two equations together? Add the left side uh, and then separately add the right-hand side uh, together. So if we add the left side together, we're going to get cosine of alpha minus beta plus cosine of alpha plus beta and then on the right-hand side, what do we have? Well, we have this whole right-hand side, cosine alpha cosine beta <clears throat> plus sine alpha sine beta, and then plus this entire right-hand side here, plus cosine alpha cosine beta uh, minus sine alpha sine beta. OK, so then how does that help us? Well. Cosine alpha cosine beta, blah, 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 cosine alpha cosine beta. So that's going to equal 2 cosine alpha cosine beta. So that takes care of this and this. Now, what else do we have left over? Plus sine alpha sine beta, blah, 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 minus sine alpha sine beta. So actually, this and this cancel out. So all we're left with on the right-hand side is 2 cosine alpha cosine beta. OK, so that's great. And again, that equals cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta. Okay. Now, if we divide everything by 2, okay, divide everything by 2, so the 2's cancel on the right-hand side, and then um, let's swap the sides also. So left side equals right side. It doesn't matter which side we write first. So let's go ahead and just say cosine alpha cosine beta equals, what do we have over here? Uh, we have a 1 half from dividing by 2, and then that's, uh, we have cosine of alpha minus beta plus cosine of alpha plus beta. OK, and that's, uh, that's one of the formulas here on our sheet. So here, cosine alpha cosine beta equals 1 half of cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta. So that's exactly what we have right here. OK, so that establishes this identity right here, or this formula, rather. OK, <clears throat> okay. so uh, this is useful if you have a product of two different cosines and you want to convert them or just manipulate it, modify it somehow so that you get rid of the product. So this uh, formula is useful for something like that. OK, so that's uh, one of these formulas here. Now we want to get the other one. So uh, if you're thinking, OK, well, we added these two equations to get one formula. So what if we subtract the two equations? And that's exactly what we have to do to get the other formula. So let's go ahead and do just that. So now instead of adding these two formulas, we're going to subtract them. So first equation minus the second equation. So now what we have on the left-hand side is cosine alpha minus beta, and then minus cosine alpha plus beta. OK, not too bad. And then uh, here, cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And then uh, minus this entire right-hand side over here. So be very careful about that. It's minus the entire right-hand side, so we need these parentheses or brackets or whatever. Cosine alpha cosine beta uh, minus sine alpha sine beta. 
Okay, so now this uh, equals, so let's distribute the minus sign so that we can simplify further. So we still have cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta, and then this becomes uh, minus cosine alpha, cosine beta, and then minus negative becomes plus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, now let's simplify this. So now it's pretty much going to be like when we added the two equations, that we just had this one extra step in here of distributing the minus sign. But now what happens is cosine alpha, cosine beta, blah, 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 minus cosine alpha, cosine beta. So those cancel. Okay, and then what we have is a plus sine alpha, sine beta, blah, 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 plus sine alpha, sine beta. So what we're left with is 2 sine alpha, sine beta. And remember, this still equals uh, cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. So now divide everything by 2. Then 2's over here, cancel. And then just like before, uh, let's just swap the sides. So left side equals right side, so it doesn't matter which side we write first. <clears throat> so let's say sine alpha sine beta equals, so dividing by 2, that's like multiplying by a half, so we'll pull the half out of there, uh, cosine of alpha minus beta, and then minus cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so make that a little neater. Okay, and that's uh, one of our other formulas, sine alpha sine beta equals 1 half cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. And we see that's exactly this formula right here, sine alpha sine beta is 1 half cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. So that establishes that formula right there. Okay. All right, now for these other two, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but uh, remember we said in the beginning, we said that this uh, third and fourth one, they're kind of the same thing. The fourth one's a little bit redundant. So what we're going to do is establish the third one. Uh, we're actually going to do exactly the same thing we did, uh, but instead of using the cosine sum and difference formulas, we're going to use the ones for sine. Okay? But then we're going to see uh, there's actually another way using simple algebraic manipulations that we can get the fourth one from the third one. And that's going to actually show us why the fourth one's kind of redundant. Because they really are pretty much the same thing. Okay, so let's erase all this. And now we'll set this up just like we had, uh, but we're going to use the uh, sine sum and difference formulas. So which one do we want to write on top? I guess we want to put the plus on top. Sine of alpha plus beta equals, so if we go back to our formula sheet here, sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And then below that, directly below that, we're going to say sine of alpha minus beta equals uh, same exact thing, but with the minus sign instead, sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh, add these two equations together. So on the left hand side what we have is sine alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta, okay? And then that's going to equal, so sine alpha cosine beta uh, plus cosine alpha sine beta. So that's this uh, first right hand side and then we're going to add that to the second right hand side, so plus uh, sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. Okay, so now when we simplify, sine alpha cosine beta blah 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 plus sine alpha cosine beta, so that's 2 sine alpha cosine beta. Okay, so that takes care of this and this, so what's left? Plus cosine alpha sine beta blah 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 minus cosine alpha sine beta, so those cancel. That's great. So this is all we're left with on the right-hand side. And then that still equals sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta. Okay. Now we divide everything by 2. Uh, and again, these 2's cancel. And then just, you know, left-hand side equals right-hand side, so it doesn't matter which side we write first. So let's just say, okay, sine of alpha times cosine of beta equals, 
And again, dividing by two is like multiplying by a half, so we'll pull that half out of there. And what we have is sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta. And this is exactly uh, the third formula there. So sine of alpha cosine beta is one half sine of alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. Sine alpha cosine beta is one half sine of alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. Okay. So that establishes this third formula here. Okay. Now, uh, why is the fourth one redundant? Okay, why is that? So here, notice this third one is sine alpha cosine beta. The fourth one is cosine alpha sine beta. Okay. Well, cosine alpha sine beta, that's the same thing as saying sine beta cosine alpha. So actually, if you take this formula here and just switch the roles of alpha and beta, just swap alpha and beta, you're going to get this fourth formula. So, and since it doesn't matter what you call the angles, you can call them alpha and beta, uh, theta and beta, theta and alpha, alpha and phi, theta and phi, x and y, z and v, u and t, and so on and so forth. It does not matter what you call them. So, uh, to get the fourth one from the third one, all you have to do is swap a uh, alpha and beta. Well, if that's all you have to do, then the fourth one doesn't really tell you anything that the third one already, you know, the third one doesn't. So the fourth one doesn't give you any new information. Okay, like here, the first and the second one, you can't get one from the other. Okay, but here with the third and the fourth, you can get one from the other. So as long as you know one of these, you're good to go. So that's why the fourth one is a little bit redundant, because you can just get it directly from the third one. Or if you'd rather remember the fourth one, and you can say the third one's redundant, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, um, if we subtract these two equations, we will get the fourth formula on the sheet here. Okay, but since we've already done that three times, uh, that adding and subtracting thing, we've already done that three times here, uh, let's, do, let's do this the different way. Let's swap uh, alpha and beta. Okay, so let's give ourselves some more room here. And we'll get the fourth, uh, we'll get that fourth formula the redundant way, or the way that shows that it's redundant. So, now what we had that we just erased was sine alpha cosine beta equals one half times uh, the quantity sine of alpha plus beta and then plus sine of alpha minus beta. Okay, now all we have to do to get the fourth formula is swap alpha and beta and just be a little careful about uh, the even and odd identities. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's swap alpha and beta. So if we swap alpha and beta, then what's going to happen is we'll have sine of beta cosine of alpha. Okay. Let's, uh, let's color code this maybe a little better so it's easier to understand what's happening. So what I'm going to do is uh, do this sine of, maybe this won't be helpful, I don't know, sine of beta times cosine of alpha equals one half times the sine of beta plus alpha plus the sine of beta minus alpha. Okay. Okay, so uh, maybe that's not quite as helpful as I was hoping it'd be, but anyway, um, all we did here is we just took this formula that we already established and we just swapped the roles of beta and alpha. So where we had alpha before, now we have a beta. Where we had beta before, now we have an alpha. Alpha became beta, beta became alpha. Alpha became beta, beta became alpha. Okay. So all we've done is just swap the roles of alpha and beta. Now let's uh, simplify this. Let's modify it so that all the alphas appear first. Okay. So first of all, what that means is, okay, um, sine beta cosine alpha. Well, that's the same thing as saying cosine alpha sine of beta. Okay. Sine beta cosine alpha, that's the exact same thing as just writing the cosine of alpha first and then sine of beta second. So then this is one half times the sine of beta plus alpha, that's the exact same thing as alpha plus beta. Okay. Let's make that a little neater. All right, then we have plus sine of, now here's where things get a little bit tricky. Beta minus alpha, okay, beta minus alpha, let's come down here. Beta minus alpha is the same thing as negative alpha plus beta. Now, if we factor out a minus sign, that's going to be or a negative one technically. That's going to be negative alpha minus beta. Okay, 
So what we really have here, beta minus alpha is negative quantity alpha minus beta. Okay? So what this really is, is the sine of uh, negative alpha minus beta. Okay? And then we also have the bigger brackets out here uh, for these. Okay? Now, uh, why is that a little bit tricky? Well, because uh, remember, sine is an odd function, right? So sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. Well, that's true no matter what theta is. Theta could be uh, any number, any, any uh, angle, any Greek letter here, any combination or expression like this. So here what we have is sine of negative something. Okay, so what we have, let's erase this. Now this is also true more generality like we were just saying. So sine of negative uh, alpha minus beta equals negative sine of alpha minus beta. Okay? So the point is that sine of negative just something equals negative sine of uh, that thing. Okay? Whether here in this case that thing is theta, okay, so it could be theta or theta, right? Or well, it could be theta and theta. Or uh, in this case here, like what we're dealing with, it could be alpha minus beta. Okay, alpha minus beta, alpha minus beta. Okay, so it could be that right there. So the point is, sine of negative stuff equals negative sine of stuff. So the point then is that sine of negative alpha minus beta, like this, equals negative sine of alpha minus beta. So this whole thing right here equals negative sine of alpha minus beta. Okay. So then what that means for this whole thing then is that uh, cosine alpha sine beta equals one half times the sine of alpha plus beta and then plus negative sine alpha minus beta so that becomes minus sine of alpha minus beta. And notice this is exactly what the fourth formula says cosine alpha sine beta equals one half times the sine of alpha plus beta minus sine of alpha minus beta. So cosine alpha sine beta equals one half times the sine of alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta. Okay. So that does establish the fourth formula and it does show that it is redundant because we just uh, got it from the third formula directly. So again, all we did is we took the third formula which we already established and we just swapped alpha and beta. Uh, why is it okay to just do that? Well, because again, Alpha and beta, they're just angles. They just represent angles. And it does not matter what you call those angles. You can call them anything you want, okay? uh, and as long as it kind of makes sense. Um, any variable name that you want, really. So alpha and beta, x and y, u and v, w and z, uh, t and s, whatever. Um, alpha, beta, theta, and phi, anything you want, really. So we can call this one alpha, this one beta, or we can call this one beta and this one alpha. And if we swap these names, then we get the fourth formula from the third formula. So the fourth formula doesn't tell us anything new because it's just a matter of taking the third formula and swapping the uh, angle names and that doesn't give us anything new. That's just uh, rewording basically of the third formula. So that's why the fourth one's kind of redundant. Um, the third and the fourth one, they say the same thing really. So technically speaking, there's a really only three product of some formulas for sine and cosine. Um, three that don't involve tangent anyway. So three product of some formulas for, here's one for sine times sine, one for cosine times cosine and then another one for sine times cosine. Okay? So there's the product of some formulas um, and where they come from.